<laughs> like if I want to look at Sandra, I have to look this way. Yeah, but it depends where you are on everybody's screen. I know your life. Uh, okay. Okay, we're recording. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a special town commission meeting on uh, May 4th at 6 p.m. Uh, before we start, I want to thank the manager for considering my request to, to get this meeting going as an effort to get our undergrounding back on track. I was uh, I was very disappointed that it got off track at the last meeting, and I'm thankful that a lot of time hasn't been lost, and hopefully we can get it back on track tonight. Um, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yes, Mayor, Mayor Burkett. I'm here. Vice Mayor Paul, I see her logging in. I'll call her at the end again. Um, Commissioner Sauer, absent. Commissioner Castle? Present. Commissioner Velasquez? Present. Vice Mayor Paul? Uh, yes, I'm here. Mayor, you have a quorum. Okay. Hello, Tina. Um, the first item is uh, an appointment of the Miami D Day County League of Cities delegate alternative alternate alternate delegate alternative delegate alternate delegate. Um, I'm not really uh, up on this, other than uh, that I know that the uh, town has a representative that sits uh, at the Day League, and I, I I believe Tina's done that for several years, and uh, I. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Madam Attorney. I think it's a commission appointment for that position. Okay. And uh, I, I guess the question is, is uh, who among us would uh, be interested in, in doing that? I would be. Okay. Is there anybody else? Uh, uh, yes, I actually would be too, usually, um, but time doesn't allow me to. To be honest, um, but I would be I would I could consider being a, being uh, an alternate. Okay, Charles. Thank you, Tina. Oh, I just wanted to speak about the position because I held it for uh, two years. I had it in 2019, and I had it um, last year. And I just wanted to say that the most important thing about being on the League of Cities is to show up at the meetings. Um, due to COVID, we had over 50 meetings this past year. And really, it's about uh, sharing information and working with other munis municipalities towards our common goals in Miami-Dade County. Um, during, my pa during the past year, I received and shared valuable COVID information and resources with our town administration and this commission. Um, I also attended a press conference in July to support municipalities' distribution of CARES Act funds that the county was withholding. And I participated in the uh, turkey drive. I dropped off toys for the toy drive. And uh, recently I rece received and shared information regarding Miami-Dade County traffic flow modifications. Uh, so I as just want, you know, I'm, I'm happy that uh, someone else is interested in this and I, I would be interested to serve, but since there is interest and I'm fine to pass it on, just want to be sure that whoever uh, takes this on is going to show up because that's thank the most you. important thing. Thank you, Tina. And, and it was, I, um, I'm happy to have served, so thank you for I, that opportunity. I, I appreciate those comments, and I, I think it, I think uh, given Charles has time constraints and Nellie has asked to do it, I, is there any objection for Nellie to move forward and take the lead on that? Nope. Okay. Uh, Eliana is on now. Yeah, I, I just want to say, I think that... Um, it would be helpful if Tina explained, because I know from even before I was involved in politics, Tina was constantly at these meetings. I mean, there's like 70 of them or more a year. It's it's a huge time commitment, huge. So it's not, it really is a big deal. Um, so I think that if Tina were wants you to- Were you interested in, in the position? Uh, oh, I do not have the time. No, I've got too much going on okay. with this. All right. Well, we're past we're past that point now. So we've got Nelly has has said she wanted wanted to do it. And uh, is there any objection to Nelly? I, as a matter of fact, let me do it this way. Let me let me just go go ahead and finish your comments. I think that Tina's been doing a great job in representing the town. I think she should continue to do it. I think okay. that there's a huge number of other projects that we're going to have to be 
focusing on. And Nellie, um, for example, the undergrounding is a big passion project of hers. This is going to take up a lot of time. So I and just I'm willing think to put in all the time necessary to go to these meetings and to be there. Okay, I listen, let's 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 start. Let's put the clock in two minutes, please, Jose. Meetings. They're going to be, in, I guess they're going to be back in person again. So that's going to be another thing to consider. But I will be there. I okay. have not missed one commission let's, meeting yet. Let's, let's, let's do this uh, democratically. So uh, let's see. Nellie has asked to be on it. Who's <clears throat> in favor of Nellie uh, doing League of Cities? I'm Maybe. sorry, Madam Clerk. Just to confirm. So it's Commissioner Velasquez making a nominate herself to be the, the delegate designee. Oh, do we do we need yes. to have a motion I'm, to do that? I'm making a motion to be the delegate. Yes. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. Um, Thanks, Charles. Can we ask the vice mayor just to explain Thanks, the Charles. position of the alternate? Um, okay. Sure, because I, I actually was alternate for one year, um, just because uh, the commissioner who had the position didn't show up. So I pretty much attended all of the meetings except for two. Um, at the time, that was in, I believe, 2018, 2018. And at the time, uh, we were in in-person meetings. So on the in-person meetings, it wasn't as demanding as the past year, because the past year was definitely like more than 50 meetings, and, and we'd have special emergency meetings, and we'd have meetings, there's coalition. So because we're still in COVID, I don't know when they're returning to um, in-person meetings. So I think now they're on uh, bi bi-monthly, uh, unless something comes up that they, they need to address sooner. So what, but with respect to the question about- Did I answer you? <laughs> Not really. Did you ever have to work with an alternate and how did it work or how should it work? Uh, yes, I did work with the alternate. Um, what it, what the way it works is that if um, they can't attend the meeting, then it's asked. Then I'm asked to uh, attend in their place. So it's and a backup. Was there ever a continuity issue? Um, Other what, than what you described when you went to all of them and the other person didn't show up. Uh, yeah, I don't think there was a continuity issue in that respect. I mean, they, they went to maybe one or two meetings and then uh, it was always passed on to me. So, it, you know, uh, that's why it was easy for me to step into the role as board member uh, in 2019 because I'd already been doing it by default. Okay. Charles, you good with that? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. And thanks thank for covering the alternate position this past year too. Because I don't... Clerk. You must Madam have done Clerk, everything. Thanks, Vice Mayor. Would you please call the roll on the motion? Commissioner Salasauer? Uh, I think that Tina should continue to do it. So I guess the motion is for Commissioner Velasquez to be the delegate. That's, it's, I just feel like we shouldn't be messing with a good thing. So the I guess it's not personal, but no. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? Uh, yes, in the spirit of passing the torch. Thank you, Tina. Yes. Mayor, the motion carries. Now we have to the alternate delegate. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, the next item is uh, Municipal Clerks Week proclamation. Mayor, oh, I'm Mayor, sorry? We need to nominate an alternate delegate. Oh, I beg your pardon. Okay, does someone want to move uh, the alternate Charles delegate? I'll nominate the Vice Mayor Tina Paul if she'll accept it. Uh, no, I, I would accept the nomination to, to stay on, but not to be the alternate. Thank you. Okay. I, I thought I'm you curious. were interested, Commissioner. I'm curious, why, 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 why is that? Well, Commissioner Kessel said he was interested in it, so I, you know. Um, okay, Charles, yeah, do you want to be sense. the alternate? Yeah, I, I think that's alternate. very nice of Tina. I mean, it is very nice. I, I, I agree with, you know, Commissioner Salzhauer that continuity is important, especially in these times. Um, so that was my nominating you. Um, if you if you were interested in the in maintaining the full position strongly, I didn't hear that from you earlier. Um, you said that you could step down if others are interested. Um, so um, I, I could fulfill the role as an alternate as long as Commissioner Velasquez doesn't start not showing up to any of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm can we sure have a that, motion? That, that won't happen. Does someone want to make a motion? I, yes, Eliana. I, I just think what we should do is have Tina be the. I mean, it's all done already, but I think that T, 
not, that Nelly should be the alternate to train and then step into the role. That would be an easier way to do it. Um, and that's okay. sort of um, order yeah, to get Commissioner, that, that decision has already been made. So I asked for a motion on I the alternate. I make a motion to um, nominate Charles I, Kessel as- Okay, is there a alternate. second to that motion? We're still talking, sorry. Nit, Tina is going to second it. Thank you, Tina. Is there any discussion on that motion? While you're still talking, go ahead, Eliana. Yeah, I think that um, I know that Tina can be modest sometimes, and I'm probably pretty sure that start she the didn't. clock. Yeah, please do. I think that Tina probably does want the did want to keep that role, and I think that she's too modest and doesn't you know doesn't want to cause trouble or speak up too loudly. But I do think that she was very interested in keeping the role, and I think that if Nellie wanted to be the alternate, that would have been a great way for her to step into that and learn from it. I do think that being the alternate when the first person who's doing it is inexperienced, there is going to be a lot falling on the alternate because they are going to have to go to all the meetings that the that the actual delegate does not go to. So that is something that you're going to need to do, whoever takes that position, which is they accommodate Again, either. Again, Eliana, so, speculations that are not correct. I'm not speculating. That's the responsibility. You are speculating because Guys, you don't know. Nellie, 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 let her finish. She's got a minute left. Let her say whatever she wants to say. It's, large, it's, not, it's a large obligation, and you're welcome to it. And whoever is the alternate has to step up as well and go to everything that the regular person can't go to. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Discussion on the motion? Yeah, I mean, I'll just add that if I'm not up for the role, you guys will hear about it. Um, I would have loved to have worked with uh, the vice mayor passing the torch. Um, I'm sure that Commissioner Velasquez and I will work well together. Given that we can't talk about anything that's town related, I wonder how much we can talk about related to this, this work. Um, so I don't know how much passing of the torch there would be anyhow, since we don't communicate with one another much at all. Um, but maybe the the town clerk and the town attorney can help guide us. Um, other than I just just can't make it or I can make it if there's something that's a hot topic. Let me, let me just add that uh, I, I at some point was the liaison to the commission many moons ago and it's not rocket science, okay? It's more about showing up and listening and being willing to express yourself. So it is a, it's not an experience thing. It's more of a dedication thing. And uh, it's uh, any of us could do a fine job, any of us could. And I thank Tina for the work she did on behalf of the town, we believe. And I know Nellie will do a fantastic job too. Uh, we have one thank public you. speaker. Please uh, set the clock for one minute, please. And if we need to go around again, we can. First speaker, please, Madam Clerk. First speaker is Joshua Epstein. Joshua, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Hey, um, Joshua FC 9017 Bay Drive. I know I've spoken with Tina a lot on the whenever I run into her. Her this was her really her pride of being on the commission. She really loves being it. So I know she is very modest. She doesn't want to speak up. But I think if I if you ask her if she wants to do it, she really does want to do it. And I think that there is experience that is needed in this. It is all around Florida. It is the league of cities. So there is a lot of experience. Tina has the experience, and especially in a time of crisis like we've just been through and that we don't know how these next year will go. This is a good training time for Nelly to be the alternate, but Tina really has done a fantastic job for us, and that's not something that you switch up. So her modesty shouldn't cost her the, this role, and I think this is very politically motivated. When there's somebody with experience, no matter how long they've been on the role, you ought to keep them there, not take them off, because you think that they're going to challenge you for mayor or whatever fear you have of that individual. So I don't think this is a right thing to do. I think this will make our town... Um, it will look inexperienced at the League of Cities, and I think Nellie will do a great job maybe in the future, and she could be good at the liaison now. But I think Tina has done a great job for this town. Thank she you. She will continue you. to do a great job, and she should be the appointment, not Nellie for now. Okay, thank you. Um, well, there you go, Nellie. Now you'll be able to challenge me for mayor thank now you. that you're the League of Cities person. <laughs> I know, right? I think I think that's what I think that's what was said. Um, okay. Yeah, that's the any, accusation. Any, any other comments on that? Oh, Horace, we have one more one more person that wants to speak. Please. Uh, Horace Henderson, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Good evening, Horace Henderson, 9195 Collins Ave. Um, I just uh, want to voice my support for uh, Commissioner Velasquez. I think she will do a wonderful job. Thank you very much. Thank you, Horace. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else on that subject before we move on? 
Okay. Uh, the next item is the mayor. Can I call the roll? Call the roll. The oh yeah. Oh, for the for the uh, alternate. Yes. Oh, yes. Commissioner Velasquez. Yes. Commissioner Salazar. Sir Kessel is alternate. Yes. Commissioner Kessel. Yes. <laughs> Vice Mayor 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 uh, Municipal Clerks Week Proclamation Approval and Presentation. Uh, I'd like to read a little history first before I uh, read the proclamation. Before there were mayors, town councils, town managers, there were town clerks. The municipal town clerk along with the tax collector is known as the oldest of public servants in local government. The early gatekeepers of archives were also called remembrancers. And before writing came into use, their memory served as the public record. Over the years, municipal clerks have become the hub of government, the direct link between the inhabitants of their community and their government. The clerk is the historian of the community for the entire recorded history of the town and its people is his or her in his or her care. The eminent political scientist, Professor William Bennett Munro, writing in one of his first textbooks on municipal government stated, no other office in municipal service has so many contracts. It serves the mayor, the city council, the city manager, when there is one, and all the alternative departments without exception. All of them call upon it almost daily for some service or information. Its work is not spectacular, but it demands versatility, alertness, accuracy, and no end to patience of patients. The public does not realize how many loose ends of city administration this office pulls together." End quote. The words written more than 80 years ago are even more appropriate today. In a paper written and presented to the delegates at the second IIMC annual conference in 1948 in Atlantic City, New Jersey, entitled The Grand Slam, Ms. Irma F. Bittner, city recorder of the Salt Lake City, Utah chapter, spoke on the responsibility of the city clerk recorder and said, its pages must be truth for they make history. For all time, we have been given this precious obligation to keep records and preserve the truth. I feel the municipal clerk is the most trusted person in local government. Our positions have evolved over time to include a myriad of duties. However, I believe in many sectors today, the municipal clerk profession is under siege downsizing in government operations and encroachment by city managers have led to some municipal clerks playing lesser roles in their organization. As municipal clerks, we represent the citizen. As the information center, we hold the key to truth in government and the preservation of self-government. We must continually strive to get this message across. And with that, I would like to read the uh, proclamation. The I was very proud to sign regarding our municipal clerk. I, I don't think, however, that the quote before um, where it talked about some friction between the town manager and our clerk's office has anything to do with the town surf side. I think they work together beautifully. Whereas the office of the professional municipal clerk, a time honored and vital part of local government exists throughout the world and whereas the office of the professional municipal clerk is the oldest among public servants. And whereas the office of the professional municipal clerk provides the professional link between citizens, the local governing bodies and agencies of government at other levels and professional municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all. Whereas the profession Professional Municipal Clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community, whereas professional municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk through participation in education programs, 
seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, provincial, county, and international professional organizations. Whereas it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk. Now, therefore, I, Charles W. Burkett, Mayor of the Town of Surfside, do recognize the week of May 2nd through May 8th, 2021, as Professional Municipal Clerks Week and further extend appreciation to our Municipal Clerks, Sandra McCready and Evelyn Herbello, and to all Municipal Clerks for their vital service perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. Congratulations, Sandra. Congratulations, Evelyn. We love you. You do a great job, yes. and we're very proud of you. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank yes. you, girls. Congratulations, ladies. Thank you, ladies. May I say something? Please. OK, so having worked with various clerks for 30 years, I can honestly say that Evelyn and Sandra are the best professionals in the business. They're amazing women, amazing clerks, and we're really fortunate and blessed to have them working for the town. So I thank them deeply for all their service and their work. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, everyone. And Amen. I want to say, thank first you. of all, we have to approve, we have to approve the proclamation. <laughs> okay. Yes. Let's, let's, we have a couple. This is, on. this is fine. Can I have a motion important. to approve it? The motion yes. to approve. Okay. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Second okay. So only on a second. So is there any discussion? I'd like yeah. to say something. Yeah. All right. Vice Mayor will go first. Okay. Thank you. So I just want to say Surfside has the best town clerk and assistant town clerk ever. Wow. Uh, their work is the backbone of town administration, and they have proven to be excellent multitaskers, full of knowledge and professionalism that makes the town whole. We are all, uh, sorry, we all owe much gratitude to both Sandra and Evelyn, our Madam Clerks. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Vice Mayor. Thank you. Charles, and then Eliana. I think that you guys do a great job. And how I know that is because you are behind the scenes working diligently and unnoticed and unseen, even when you're not feeling entirely well. And even when you have a huge workload mm -hmm. and even when you have pressure from a commissioner or two or three and a vice mayor and a mayor, <laughs> as well as maybe a town manager or assistant or two, um, not to mention all the other folks in Surfside who are not shy. Um, but I have seen you both work seamlessly um, with the poker face, um, even when it was a tough situation. And when Sandra happens to be out, Evelyn does not miss a beat, ch chimes right in there within 10 minutes of an email. Seamless. Great job, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Eliana. Yeah, I want to say um, thank you. You guys do a great job. Um, I don't have any other town clerks to compare you to but I'll take their word for it. I'll take Lily's word for it, that you're better than other town clerks. Um, but you guys do a great job. I do, especially this, this, this year has been insane with the number of meetings and emergency meetings. And for example, uh, like tonight, I don't really think we needed to have an emergency an emergency meeting when we're having a commission meeting in, you know, in, in seven days. So I'm sorry that we're taking up your time tonight. Every time we have one of these workshops or meetings and stuff, we're adding to your already heavy workload. So I do my best to try to not do that. Um, and I hope that everyone else can do the same so that you guys can have some kind of work-life balance that you're entitled to and not have endless meetings all the time after hours and also have to deal with endless public records requests, which I know are also a lot of work for you and frustrating. So I don't make those kinds of requests out of deference and respect for you. So thank you very much for doing a great job every day and um, you know, powering through even some of our more ridiculous requests and insane workload. Thanks. Thank you, there Commissioner. You Nelly? Well, I wanted to thank you both. Um, you guys do an amazing job. You're always here. Um, thank you very much for everything you do for our town and um, very proud to have you on board. Um, you guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to take so much time so that we can continue to do this meeting quickly and you guys can go and start doing your own life with your families and enjoy and have some partying so you guys are all together. <laughs> Mr. Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have worked with several city clerks, town clerks, 
Um, and this relationship can be difficult. Um, my relationship with the town clerk, uh, but it's not that way here. Um, I've been in situations before where it's, it's difficult for all of it, not just the relationship I have with the town clerk, but the relationship we all have. Sometimes it can be very contentious, but this, these two do not um, have any fiber in their body of contentiousness or contempt. They, they, are, uh, they come to me, they include me, they stand me up, prop me up. Uh, it, it's, it's very much appreciated more than I probably tell you, um, but uh, we, you, you two are, are about as good as I've been around. I, I, I'm with Lily. It's, it's, it's tough to find good clerks. It really is. And we've got, you know, one A and one and one A. You know, we've got two really good ones that stand up and do whatever we, me, we ask them to do. And uh, uh, they come in here sometimes not happy about things, but you know, they we always leave with an answer, and they all, they always have a solution to the problem. That's what I like about it. It's never what are you going to do about it. It's this is what we need to do about it. And I appreciate that. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Manager. In my travels, I've had a chance to work with clerks also, and I've got to say that, uh, you know, th this crowd here in the clerk's office, they're tough, yeah. they're professional, yeah. and they're pleasant. And, uh, you know, they're serious about the work they do. I know that they're serious about the uh, service that they provide our residents. And, you know, I, more on behalf of the residents, I want to thank you, ladies, because you get it. You understand that all of us are here in the service role. We're here because the residents put us here to do a job and it's all about them. It's not about us. And you guys demonstrate that every day. Thank you very much for the great work that you do. We're all very proud of you. Thank you, thank Mayor. You. We're very humble for all of your words. Um, we thank you. This is a very um, great recognition we received. It's once a year and we are happy um, to receive it, and we want to say that we're proud to serve not only the elected officials, our manager, our staff, but also our residents. I think they usually are the keeps us going, and they're the first in line. And with that, we have a public speaker. All right, let's bring him in. Light argument, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Yeah, my name is Eli Turgeman, 9064 Bay Drive. I could not be happier and floored on this recognition. As a former mayor, commissioner, and vice mayor of this town, I have worked with Sandra, and presently I'm working with Evelyn, two of my finest, finest individuals of the town of Surfside. And I am so proud of both of you Continue doing the great job. You're both fantastic. Thank you. On behalf of Thank you. all the residents and on behalf of anybody else that wants to join. The Thank, you, Eli. Thank you, Eli. Thank you, Eli. We have another public speaker, Mayor. Okay. Please Joshua Epstein. On. Joshua, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Hey, Joshua Epstein, 1917 Bay Drive. Thank you guys for... Oh, sorry. Thank you guys for everything that you do. I'm sure it's a lot of work and the meetings are very long and boring. A lot of them and stressful. So thank you guys for everything that you do and very happy to have you guys as our town clerks. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Joshua. And another public speaker is Deborah Simadevilla. Deborah, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Deborah Simadevilla, 9108 Abbott Avenue. Felicidades, niñas. You girls rock. Let me tell you something in since forever that I've gone to commission meetings there, you have always been the bridge between what's going on in the town and us residents that just need clarity and a friendly face. And you always guide me. Thank God we don't have to fill out the little papers anymore. Praise God. <laughs> Pero I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of our hearts because you guys do work your beautiful hands and you know what we really appreciate it sandrita yevelin you're always so kind and sweet and and genuine okay and you guys are the awesome bridge between the town and the residents so i just want to say thank you and god knows i've 
done my uh, share of investigations in town, and you've always been amazing and quick, girl. So I just want to thank you. And even when we were in the committee, you were always so wonderful and helped us with everything as novices dealing with the town. So thank you. God bless you both and your families. And have some fun today. Thank you, thank Debbie. Debbie. It's all pleasure to serve you guys. Ah, oh, qué linda. Gracias, Okay. Mama. Shall we call the question, Madam Clerk? Yes, Mayor. I'll be proud to. Commissioner Salasauer? Yes. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes, with pleasure. Thank you, Mayor Burkett? Heck yes. Mayor, the motion carries. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Okay, the next uh, item is authorization to expend undergrounding coordinating design engineering services, otherwise known as the plans for the undergrounding. Would you please take us through that, Madam Clerk? Yes, Mayor. Under resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Surfside, Florida, approving a project agreement with KCI Technologies Inc. for utility undergrounding services for phase one preparation of utility coordination plans pursuant to the continuing service agreement for professional engineering services providing for authorization and implementation, authorizing the expenditure of funds, and providing for an effective date, item four. Thank you. Is there a motion to move that forward? I'll motion to move it forward. Thank oh. you. Is there a second? Tina, yes. I mean, I second Nelly? that motion. Okay, discussion. Who would like to go first? Please set the clock at three minutes because it seems like we don't have a lot of speakers tonight. Charles, you can go ahead. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm happy to make this motion. I really appreciate that the town manager, um, you know, listened to us at the last commission meeting. And um, I had I had voiced concerns prior to that meeting. Um, I want to thank Mr. Abbott for hanging in there, um, as I'm sure he he's used to these types of uh, politics and questions. Uh, thanks to the vice mayor for pointing out some um, some you know holes or lapses in the contract, which didn't increase my security. Uh, but mostly, I just have a better handle on how this project is going to unfold. And, um, and those were the questions that I had prior to the last commission meeting, and the document from the town manager addresses them. So now I'm back on board and back in sync with this project. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Charles. Uh, thank Vice you, Mayor? Charles. Uh, yes, I'd like to thank Mr. Abbott for being here. Um, there is a mis mi there's been misinformation uh, specific to me in my role regarding last month's deferral that needs to be corrected. It was a deferral. I have always and continue to support our residents deciding on a project of this magnitude and expense. I brought forward a discussion on the previous commission in August of 2019 with new information regarding easements for FPLs undergrounding before this commission was elected. I also prepared a discussion item for this commission in April of 2020 with a summary of a conversation with FPL's external affairs advisor and supporting documents from my previous research before Nellie decided this would be her project. Um, I want to approve this with conditions um, because I still have some questions about the project, but I don't feel that it should be delayed, but I feel like uh, I would be more comfortable with a stopgap or a checkpoint uh, with a limitation of, of say fifty thousand dollars, so we can subject to an order of magnitude, which would be a breakdown of the cost based on the experience of these experts we've hired. Um, the purpose is to see if we remain within the ballpark of eighteen million that was presented to the residents in the ballot question. And I do have some questions regarding the scope of services um, because it's not it's not done as a cost per item. So I'd like to see an order of magnitude cost for restoration outside of the right-of-way, which is on page 16, uh, 1.05, uh, utility coordination plans. I'd like to, um, we also need to identify and analyze the existing condition, conditions of the right-of-way and the undergrounds. We don't have a lighting plan and um, we don't have pricing estimate. And there's many ex exclusions. So I'd like to know how are we gonna arrive at the cost basis for these exclusions um, the exclusions are the other utility designs, the survey. Um, there's also a question about the 100-year uh, flood. Um, here on page 16, we're using the base grade, and I'm just wondering, is that, the cor is that correct for our town? Um, there's also uh, necessary to find out the landscaping and irrigation and tree location costs. Uh, so we need estimates for the total design, FPL work, other utility work, 
the right of the in right of way estimate and the outside right of way estimate and the lighting plan. So I just want to be clear on where these are coming from and because I don't believe they're included in this price. So uh, I'm more comfortable moving forward with the condition for uh, order of magnitude so we can find out some of those answers. Tina, would you like to direct any questions to Mr. Abbott? Um, well, I wasn't sure if KCI. So you can get here. the answers to your questions. If, if Mr. Abbott has, I mean, I've stated what, I, what my questions are. Um, the only thing I'm concerned: can we get an order of magnitude with a stopgap at well, fifty thousand dollars? Well, well look, I, I think what I think it might be more appropriate for you to ask because it, we're educating the commission right now. Okay, well, that's the question. The, okay, so okay, so Mr. Abbott, I, I'm not clear on what the question is, but if you are, please. Take a shot at answering it. You have to unmute your mic. I was pushing the wrong button. I was pushing the mic on my picture. Uh, I don't understand the question. When you're saying a stopgap, are you suggesting that we would only authorize KCI to do $50,000 worth of work, and then we would check to see what their status of their work effort is? Is that is that the question? No, um, but thank you for asking for clarification. The question is, um, I would like to see an order of magnitude with a breakdown of the costs based on um, you and KCI's experience of having done this kind of work. And so the stop, I mean, if the stop gap should be more than 50,000, I, I would think you could gather that information with 50,000. I, I want to, you know, I want to proceed with the full amount that's listed here, but to at least have some kind of checkpoint where we can evaluate what the order of magnitude is. Okay. Well, Vice Mayor, I think you, you probably have a vision of how you want the uh, design to go about being completed. I think that's, I think that's what I'm understanding because you keep saying order of magnitude. Could you use other words? Because I'm not quite clear on what you mean by order of magnitude. It it's it's a term for uh, this project how you, how you evaluate the costs. Yeah, but make it. Why don't you why don't you use a term that everybody would understand? Well, I'm not sure of another term. Do you understand what that even means? Yes, I do. It's the well, magnitude. Could you tell of the me? Project. Could you tell me what it means, please? It's the magnitude of the project. It's it's uh, um, KCI and Mr. Abbott have experience in doing this sort of project, so they would be able to, based on their experience and based on the information they've gathered from the previous FPL report, they would be able to put together uh, a, a cost basis to just to check that we're in line with the 18 million that we've... Uh, All right, so now I understand. Evidence. But the, the order of magnitude comment, I, I just didn't understand what that meant. Well, it's just to see if we're in line with the ballpark figure we've put out there. Okay, so you, I'm not asking you, for another ballpark. I'm asking for something that's more fine-tuned. Right. To see if we're in okay. line with that. Okay. So or if, we're if over it's okay, with me, if it's okay with you, let me see if I can repeat what I think you're asking. Okay. You're asking Mr. Abbott to put together a cost estimate based on his experience um, to see how that lines up with the estimates that we gave to the voters back in uh, November. Similar to that, not not exactly. I mean, based on his experience and the information he has put together, and to come up with uh, the scope of services is is not doesn't have a cost per item. The scope of services is for various. Uh, it's on page nineteen. Well, I understand. I understand. But but but, but and again, um, I'm, I guess again, let me just get everybody's comments. You you, you yeah, sure. I, yeah. Let me, let me let me do that. Let me go. Who I, Eliana? Do you have your hand up? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So I just want to be very clear how I feel about this. And if you want to run a, a clock for me for three minutes, if that would make you feel better, then go ahead and do that. Um, I feel like we really, this is a bait and switch for residents because when we sat up here and we had these meetings and the information sessions and the flyers that went out to residents, nobody said we were going to be spending half a million dollars to get them a number that they can then agree, you know, approve. We said, Oh, it's just 60 grand to get the estimate from FPL. That's if you watch the meetings, which I've done, I've gone back and watched the meetings. That is what we told the residents. That's what we told voters that we were going to be spending in order to come back and give them a number and, and where they could approve the money that we were going to have to borrow. Everyone sits around and complains about their water bills. Why? Because we borrowed a ton of money to do the water and sewer project. 
this magnitude of a project is something that the residents need to approve. And that doesn't mean that it's okay to spend $500,000 or a million dollars and then ask them because we didn't say that to them, which is why from the get-go, I was not opposed to asking the residents if they want to underground. I was opposed to giving them a ballot question with no actual information in it, which is exactly what we did. We gave them a hypothetical, how'd you like to have the power lines buried if it costs somewhere around this? And now we're saying, oh, we're gonna have to spend half a million dollars and it's gonna be more because of all the things that Tina just mentioned that are not even included in, this, in these services, okay? The idea that everything's gonna be underground is not true. We're going to have to have street lighting, okay? This, I, it's gonna be four years of the streets being dug up, a big mess. Individual homeowners are gonna to have to pay between, I think it's five or $7,000 to have, to be joined with the, to be hooked up to the power, okay? There are a lot of costs that are gonna to need to be laid out for residents. You can sit there and shake your head, but everybody knows that this is a con game, okay? This is a bait and switch. You tell residents, hey, 60 grand, that's all we're doing is saying, do you want the idea? We're gonna spend 60 grand and now you're coming back and spending $500,000 when earlier this year, you laid off a town employee who was making, I don't even know what she was making, like 30 grand because we had to cut corners and save money and be fiscally responsible. And all you've done since then is hemorrhage money on your own projects. On the zoning code, $100,000. On this, now another $300,000. And this is gonna be another $200,000. By the end of this year, you will have spent more than the million dollars that you claim that you saved the residents, okay? That's the joke here. And that's where at the end of the day, there's going to be a piper that you're gonna to have to pay. And it's not okay. Because there are, even though no one's at this meeting, it's probably me, my kid is out listening somewhere. Maybe George Kousis will be on the line. Debbie Simitavia, there's like five residents that are gonna participate here to spend $300,000. You wanna start spending money? Buy the land next to the park. Give the generations to come a park that they can enjoy forever. Do something that's gonna actually have value and not and not this ridiculous concept of you just pushing things forward and spending money. Thank without you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, well, listen, there's a lot to unpack right there. Who's next? Who has not spoken? Has everybody spoken on the subject? Then it's, I guess, okay, Nellie, did you speak? I don't think you did. No, I did not speak. Um, thank you very much, Mayor. Um, I have to say that when the undergrounding of the power lines was brought to the commission last year, I wanted to put the $60,000 or whatever it was that it was gonna cost. You guys said you wanted to tell residents that it was gonna cost anywhere from 16 to 18 million. Well, this particular expense that we're talking about right here is part of those 16 to $18 million that we need to spend either now or spend later, but at some point they need to be spent. And Mr. Abbott needs this information to be able to give us a completely accurate number on what we're gonna actually bring to our residents. And it's very different to actually ask people, would you like to spend this money than just force them to have to spend some money. And that's why we actually went ahead and made a uh, ballot question that residents have to approve any kind of debt that this town incurs over, I believe it was a million dollars if I'm not wrong. So I do believe that we, the residents have been informed, the residents know of this, and 75% of our voting residents said yes to undergrounding this. So that I take very seriously because that's what our residents want. Our residents don't want concrete poles that are gonna make our city look ugly. Our residents don't want that. Our residents want their power lines undergrounded, just like Key Biscayne is going to do. And I actually reached out to them and they're gonna spend about $25 million. Their town is much larger than ours. Their population is more than half of, more than half of ours. Okay, so I mean, I think we're going to, going to be within the same ballpark that we've actually mentioned to our residents. And in terms of scopes, I mean, it really is clearly stated right there that where the bulk of the money for this $200,000 or $300,000 is going to go to preparing the plans. I, I clearly see it right there. It says prepare utility coordination plans. I mean, I don't understand if somebody else doesn't read that properly, but I understand it means let's prepare the plans where all these um, uh, boxes are gonna go and where all the um, feeders and whatever they're called. And I also contacted Golden Beach 
which their houses and their lots are much larger than ours, their residents paid from the, the, the street to their homes $1,500, not $7,000, not $9,000, or anything like that. As usual, misleading our residents. And that's all I had to say. Thank you very much. Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's be honest here. Uh, Commissioner Salzhauer has not wanted this project from the beginning. That's fair. And, and, you know, listen to her credit, she does everything she can to, to stop it. And I appreciate that. Tina, you know, I, I don't know, it's hard to tell if Tina wants it or not, but, uh, you know, I think the questions tonight were semi-productive. I think Tina, to answer your question, I think we need, these plans are not just to get a price. These plans are not just to tell the people how much it's gonna cost, which is something it will do, but it's also to build out the project. This is not a est cost estimating uh, uh, expedition. This is, we're actually doing the plans for the project and that's what's needed. And I think that Charles, you know, your point was well taken too, Charles. You know, I think that, you know, after looking at the information that you had a second chance to look at, I think I think what you're, you're saying is that you realize that 70 something percent of the entire town wants this thing to get going and these delays, I mean, you know, you say you, you, you move to defer it, but Tina, this is something that's been going on for months and months and months. It's, it's also like that, uh, that street painting thing. You, you, you said that you didn't have enough information. You know, the commissioners that come on here and say they don't have enough information, you know, put your hand down, Eliana. I didn't interrupt you when you were talking. Put your hand down, stop the clock, put your hand down and do not interrupt, okay? I to respond turn to the you. mic off, turn her mic off and leave it off, please. Okay. So the bottom line is, is that there are projects that, that certain commissioners don't want to see happen. And instead of just saying they don't want to see it happen, they make up excuses for why it shouldn't happen. And they delay the projects. This is something that we've been talking about for months and years, years and years. This is not something that's just come onto the table. This is not something that you're just seeing. You've had access to this information now for weeks, for weeks, and you've come back, Tina, you've come back. I mean, listen, Salzhauer's being honest. She hates the project. She doesn't want to see it happen. You, you kind of are in the middle and you're kind of slow walking, but the bottom line is this expenditure is part of the process for putting the power lines underground. This is what's necessary. You can't build a project without plans. And one of the things, you know, we'd be going forward full speed if we didn't have this, this step that we're gonna take. And we're taking the step because we wanna be sure that we're gonna deliver the project at the right cost. And quite frankly, this is the only way to do it. And if you wanna wring your hands and pick and choose, ask your expert. You've got an expert right here, right now. Ask him direct questions, because I wanna hear the answers too. I asked you to answer, ask him the questions, but you didn't. So I hope that you'll take the opportunity to ask him the questions and get the answers so we can all learn what the answers are. And if you've got a, if you've got a great point and there's something we're all missing, I know all of us want to hear it and see it, okay? All right, so we've all had a chance to talk. I'm gonna go out to the speakers right now. We're gonna get the-, uh, the May I uh, respond? You can after the speakers, yes. You, you said so, what I think, and okay. you don't know what I think. Okay. So I'd like I know, to I know, and you're going to get to respond. So, well, and you got to, and, and by the way, Ms. Salzhauer, you've got to stop interrupting too, okay? I have to leave so, in 10 minutes. Okay, well then, I'm sorry. We're going to get these speakers. We're going to respond. Okay, look at Ms. Salzhauer, I don't know what to do with you. Do I need to ask someone to permanently mute you while someone else is talking? Go ahead, Madam Clerk, bring in the first speaker for three minutes. First speaker is Joshua Epstein. Hi, Joshua, please state your name and address for the record on your comment. Joshua Epstein, 9317 Bay Drive. So I don't know really where to know where to start, but I can say that everyone seems to wave their hands when there's low voter turnout. Nobody turns out to vote. But then we ask the residents, give them a specific price range. Hey, we're going to come back to you before the major expenditures are spent. $300,000 is a ton of money. And then we're going ahead to try to spend that money. The money was never approved by the residents, and there is a fiscally responsible path to do this. We can easily go back. We can go back, as Paul Abbott said, ask for a rough estimate within 20 to 25%. Then he'll give us back that rough estimate. We could see 
is this something that we're comfortable going forward with on just with the commission approval or do we go back to the voters with that range but we did not ask the residents to spend this amount of money and this go back going back and forth trying to put thoughts in somebody else's head is quite ridiculous i'm for undergrounding the power lines i live in the same house as commissioner salzar she's also for undergrounding the power line so it's not excuses being thrown up it's legitimate reasons why there's a different route to take on this project and how to be fiscally responsible you can't come in as a commission that says they're going to be fiscally responsible but then go ahead and spend money without the residents approval also something i think is totally glanced over in this project not only that expenditure that you're spending now each resident's going to have to pay close to seven thousand dollars per house that was only approved by let's say that extra 30 percent of residents that's 300 houses that don't have the money that can't pay it that have seven thousand dollars now that they were planning to put towards their kids college put towards braces for their child that they now have to pay even if it's monthly no matter what you do that money is on the town resident that was never advertised not once and i don't understand how we had this meeting last week was four to one against it all of a sudden we come back with no new facts and everyone is for it all of a sudden except for i think commissioner salzhauer and i don't know about the vice mayor but we did not ask the residents for it and then it's the bottom line here and there's a clear way to be trying fiscally responsible and do this get that rough estimate because i don't know if you're if you know but construction prices construction equipment prices have gone through the roof not only do the covid shortage but since 2013. so we need to get an estimate with the actual numbers for this day and age see how much money it is going to cost us once we have that figure, especially know how much money it's going to cost each individual of our residents, because that money's going to be on them, their pocketbook at the end of the day. Once we have that money, then we can go ahead and spend $300,000, $500,000. But going to the residents and asking them, do you want something after you spent $500 to $1 million is not a real question. They've paid $500 to $1 million. They, that's not a fair question to ask them. It's ridiculous. And they did not approve it. They did not approve it. They did not approve it. I'll stand here for five minutes and say that they did not approve this expenditure there's a fiscally responsible way to do this get the real numbers get that estimate it's not slowing this process down that estimate's going to need to be gotten either way get that estimate now then you can go back to the residents if it's a crazy number or then this commission can go forward with that expenditure but to not but to go ahead and spend this money now is really fiscally irresponsible and i think that should be your top priority is be fiscally responsible and spend this money as if it was your own i know for sure nobody here is going to spend three hundred thousand dollars of their own money if there was a cheaper option thank you Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Horace Henderson. Horace, I'm just for the record in your comments. Good evening, Horace Henderson, 9195 Collins Ave. <clears throat> um, I, I don't understand how anyone can say that this wasn't approved by the voters. It was approved by 70% of the voters. Um, you, you can do whatever you want with the with wording or what have you. But 70% of the voters said they wanted you to do this. Now, if it's going to cost, you know, 200,000, and you, you, keep, you guys keep talking about, you know, a million, the people who don't want to see it, it's, it's not, nothing close to that. So just spend the money, do what you're supposed to do as the elected officials and do what the, do what the you know, the residents want, and let's have this done. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Speakers, Jeff, Jeff Rose. Jeff, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Good evening, everybody. Jeff Rose, A51 Fred Avenue. First, I want to say I put uh, I trust our finance guy, Jason Green, and uh, Commissioner yes. or our uh, town uh, manager, Andy Hyatt, very much that yeah. this will go smooth. And I just want to say this. Um, I'm going to actually piggyback off Commissioner Velasquez and actually give a compliment to all you commissioners here. At the last election, you guys put on the ballot, which I think was even more important than the undergrounding. I believe, uh, Mr. Mayor, you, you're the one that spearheaded this. I'm going to read it word for word. Shall the charter be amended to require that any indebtedness occurred after the effective date of this amendment exceeding 15% of the town's average annual property tax revenue for the preceding five years and which is not fully repayable within a maximum of seven years is approved by a minimum of three members of the town commission followed by approval or referendum of the town electors by majority vote? That is our protection to take this to the next step. The first step is doing exactly what you are guys are doing now is putting this on there and spending this money to find it out. The next step, I believe, unless there's a special election, is probably going to be at the next March election in 2022, and the voters will really decide. This is how much it's going to cost, X amount of dollars. Our finance guy is going to be on top of it to make sure we don't spend a penny more. No pressure, Jason. 
And then the voters are going to decide it's going to cost this amount. Do we want it? And that's how we get there. You're basically, uh, Mr. Abbott, I don't know you, but I know that you are getting and your team are basically you're putting the plans together. How much is this going to cost and putting the whole bid? You're doing the plans and the bidding of it. Without finding that information out, we're just spinning our wheels. This is the second step. I think the first step was the ballot when we approved it. This is obviously the second step. The third step is going to be executed whenever the, the residents come out and vote. Whether, like I said, that's special election or March 2022, we can't, you can't take it to the ballot without this. And that's why, personally, I support this. I know it's more than everyone wanted to spend. I think we, we all agree to that. But you guys put in the, the stopgap, the safety measure, when you guys put that last question on the ballot. If there's a big indebtedness and we have to go there, the residents and three commissioners have to decide. So thank you guys for putting that on the ballot because that was this is the perfect example of why it was on the ballot to protect just commissioners from ever going rogue. It's the commissioners that will support it and the residents. So thank you guys and I appreciate it. Very nice, Jeff. Okay, next speaker, please. Next speaker is Jeff Platts. Jeff, please state your name and address for the record on your comment. Uh, Jeffrey Platt, 9225 Collins Avenue. Um, I'm, I'm kind of confused here because the ballot questions seem to only ask if, if the residents were in favor of getting a price to do a study to find out how much the undergrounding would cost. The ballot question was not whether we wanted undergrounding or we didn't want undergrounding. The ballot question was only, do we want to spend $60,000 to get a price? I think everybody jumped from step one to step two to step three without ever getting the answer to step one. You've all jumped ahead of the thing. You all assume that the residents are in favor of the total overall project. And that is not what we voted on. Your 70 to 75% is an erroneous, it's a correct number, but for an erroneous subject. The 70% the was only to do an investigation to find out the price. Because how can you approve undergrounding or not approve undergrounding if you don't know what it costs? I mean, that, that's obvious. It, 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 you, you don't buy a car, you know, without knowing what it costs. You know, they, you don't take it home and they say, well, you know, you could, you know, we'll, we'll give you a price later on. No, you know the price. And that's what this $60,000 was supposed to be for, to get the price. Why are you on step two now? I mean, can you can you figure out? I mean, tell me, tell me. Read. I want you to read the ballot question, Mr. Platt. Can, yes, can sir. I, can, I, can I? Can we stop the clock so you don't use up any of your time? And I'll read you the ballot question. Sure. The question. The question was: Do you favor the undergrounding of Surfside's power lines and other utilities in order to improve safety and promote sustainability and resilience? at an estimated cost of 16 to $18 million. Okay, that was the question. You may continue. Gee, I thought the question, the ballot question was to no, find out a price I, for it. I just read the I, question I, I didn't think you. I didn't think the question was, was whether we approved the whole project. How does somebody yes. approve a project without knowing the price? Okay, the, would you like me to read it again? Stop the clock. No, no, you, you, you've answered me. You, you, you're going to bully me again like you bully everybody else. I understand your tactics, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to let you bully me. I'm going to talk the way I want to talk, and then you don't have to interrupt me, okay? Thanks very much, okay? So I thought the, the, the question was only whether we spend 60000 uh, Evidently, that's not true, so have a nice day. Thank you. Um, just for the record, before we have the other speakers, I'd like to read the ballot question one more time for clarity's sake, because <laughs> there are a lot of people floating around a lot of comments about what the question actually was. The question was, do you favor 
the undergrounding of Surfside's power lines and other utilities in order to improve safety and promote sustainability and resilience at an estimated cost of 16 to $18 million, period. So do you approve undergrounding utilities for a price of 16 to 18,000, 18 million? The answer was 75%, I think it was 74% to be exact, said, yes, we approve of that. Okay, keep going with the speakers, please. Can we actually put the, the ballot question on the screen, Charlie? Yeah, yeah, I'll share the ballot question. If Residents are not confused. And yeah. I'd like to know exactly where seven to nine million nine thousand dollars. Okay, well, it's all listen. They're all pretend. They're all made up numbers. But let's let me share the screen while we have the speakers. I don't know. I don't think we need to do that. Go ahead, next speaker, please. Madam Clerk. Deborah Simadevilla, Debbie, please state your name and address for the record in your comments. Hi, Deborah Simadevilla, 9108 Abbott Avenue. Okay, we were all, uh, I think, a little shaken up by the number. Now, I have to say, I like to research matters, and I have looked at other towns, such as Key Biscayne, Palm Beach, Pine Crest, and Mr. Abbott, I know you from the last time you got involved with Surfside. <laughs> I've been around for a little bit. And you are the man the person that deals with these projects. You are very respected in the field, sir. Everybody that I speak to in other towns um, have said that to me. I have looked at your reports. I looked deeply into the Key Biscayne reports. And in fact, I called them and I asked them, what was their process? And I believe that they spent this amount of money, if not more, without even doing a referendum to even find out if people were uh, interested in undergrounding or not. So I know that we were all a, a bit shaken up, but listen guys, we our referendum was very gracious, okay? It was a form of communication to get a feel for what the town residents want. It was an overwhelming amount, people. If it was like 53%, I'd be like, well, I don't know. But it was a very big amount, about 75%. So different than Key Biscayne, we already know the majority wants this. And I believe that if we're going to invest, invest money, spend money, then it might as well be spent in what we will already have to use in order to do the project. Mr. Abbott is very well respected, okay? I know, speaking with the people that I spoke with, that they all felt very secure in working with you, Mr. Abbott, okay? And I was shocked at first last meeting, but I have to say, after speaking with Key Biscayne, I've looked into Palm Beach, not sure if you were involved with that one, but all of these municipalities had to spend the money to get the precise number that we will bring back to the town, to the residents. Anything else would be irresponsible, okay? Right now, we need to get the exact numbers so that we may bring it back to the people, okay? So that's very clear, people. I support it because I feel that we're working with a professional, okay, a specialist that knows what he's doing. So also, thank God, thank you, Mayor, that you brought forth the, uh, as uh, Jeff Rose said, the referendum, you know, that secures us from anyone going rogue and spending money that, you know, we wouldn't have permission to. So, and I also really appreciate um, Commissioner Castle because before everyone got elected, <laughs> Commissioner Castle, I know you weren't that into it. Um, Eliana, Commissioner Eliana, you said you weren't into it either, but Commissioner Castle, different to Eliana, I really appreciate you being flexible and really, really listening to the heart of your residents and being willing to, you know, be flexible and move forward with something, knowing that this is what your town, your residents are expecting. They're expecting a Deb, reason. Could okay. you conclude your comments That's for me, it. please? That's it. Just, I appreciate you, Charles, both Charles. And I really, you know, your residents expect a thank, result. Thank, we can't thank get you. it without spending the money. Thank you so Next much, everyone. I appreciate all of you. Thank you, Deborah. Next speaker, Madam Clerk, please. Next speaker is George, um, sorry, George Kusulas. George, please state your name and address for the record in your comments. Uh, George Kusulas, 9225 Collins Avenue. Um, I won't repeat what Jeff Rose said. I think he was uh, right on target, but I want to add to it. Uh, 
an, a referendum on an issue like this can always be confusing. Obviously, there was one speaker that thought it was for something different because that's how the conversation started out in the months preceding it. And, and fortunately, I think the the, the uh, question was worded more precisely, uh, the one that actually was on the ballot, which is good. Uh, but referendums will always lead to the problem of question one, do you want to have ice cream for dinner? Yes. Question two, do you want to gain weight? No. So if we get to the second referendum and the answer is no, people will have wasted the money, but that, that's the price of this process. But I think you do need to spend this money. My bigger uh, uh, concern will be to address the, the questions of the w vice mayor, uh, not so much the, the cost issue, because I think that'll be resolved with this uh, expenditure of money we're talking about tonight, but all the random <clears throat> items that she brought up, because having done infrastructure projects, I'll tell you, everyone, every one of them represents an opportunity, because the cost of what you're doing of the, 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 the main project uh, is uh, far greater than the cost of all the ancillary things that can be done uh, pennies on the dollar or dimes on the dollar if you do them at that time. And, and there are plenty of them uh, because the right of way of uh, this district will be, be changed quite a bit because of this project or it could be, and it's a way to reimagine it. And I'll just bring up one thing. She had mentioned streetlights. So right now, Surfside is lit by uh, overhead Cobra lights, the tall lights uh, that no one really ever seems quite satisfied with. Um, and it may be a time to uh, replace them with uh, pedestrian-scaled uh, streetlights, but those are much shorter and they'll be more plentiful than the lights we have now. But this is just something to think about. What kind of... Um, uh, street network do we want in single family surf site in the future and make that a part of this scope. Thank you. Thank you, George. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Ruben Bravo. Ruben, please state your name and address for your record and your comments. Ruben, please state your name and address for the record. Is he having trouble with his mic? I I'm trying to unmute him, but I can't make you. Okay. Well, we'll get him. Um, Ruben, um, while you work on your mic, let's so oh, I saw it go away for a second there. Why don't we go to the next speaker and then we'll come back to Ruben after the next speaker. Next speaker is Alicia Bulmergreen. Alicia, please see your name and address for the record in your comments. Hi, Alicia Bulmergreen, 9173. Uh, uh, <laughs> I can't hear you, Alicia. You can hear me? A little bit now. Not now. Uh, nope. We can't hear you at all. Okay. Let's let's see if she can get her connection better and go to the next speaker, please. Do you Mayor, are, you, are we allowing um, speakers to speak twice? Not right now. Let's go back and see if we can get Ruben. Yeah. Jose, can you try to see if you can bring Ruben? Back and then we'll try Mrs. Bormogreen. Ruben is there, but I cannot unmute him again. Okay. Um, okay, you want to try Mrs. Boimel Green one more time? You hear me? Yes. Okay, 9173 Kyle Avenue, Alicia Boimel Green. Um, I was saying that I never understood why this was a ballot question in the first place. I think by virtue of the fact that you were elected um, and this was a clear election promise, you had the authority to proceed. 
However, once you put this on the ballot and the information that you were giving before you put it on the ballot was clearly that it was going to cost $60,000, I think that it would be appropriate for you guys to admit that, that you didn't do full due diligence on finding out how much the quotes would cost. And I think that the vice mayor is raising a valid point that she feels uncomfortable about it. Um, I don't think she's indicating that she doesn't want the project. I think she is trying to do due diligence and make sure that a mistake like this doesn't happen again as we move forward where the stakes are much higher. Um, that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Tina, you wanted to respond, so you're up. Let's set the clock for three minutes, please. Yes. Yeah, so first of all, um, like I said, I do want to move forward with this. I understand that it was a ballot question. I understand that we need to do this study in order to get the answers that we need to move forward. I do have, I thought by putting these conditions in, it gives us a chance to move forward, but also get a checkpoint, get some information that we can share with the residents, kind of a pro, like a progress report. That's the order of magnitude, but it's more than that because it's about um, the cost basis based on the experience that Mr. Abbott and KCI has. So it's not to stop the project. The deferral last month was not to stop the project. There was a serious typo in there. Um, by no means do I mean any disrespect to Mr. Abbott. He comes highly recommended from Sunny Isles Beach. I know he's been working with that town for quite a while. I have no, no issues with KCI. I just want to put in a mechanism, mechanism for us to see how in line we are with the ballpark we presented because we, didn't pre we presented a ballpark that we basically picked out of a hat. It could go either way. So let's get a closer ballpark by starting you know, I'm, I'm willing to proceed with this, but I'd like to have the condition of a stopgap checkpoint. And it can be at 50,000, it can be higher, it can be lower. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a direction maybe for Mr. Abbott. We haven't heard from him. And um, I really do have to leave shortly. So uh, if, if we can hear from Mr. Abbott how he feels about what I've proposed. Okay, Mr. Mr. Abbott. Mayor. And one more thing, Mayor. You started mentioning about street the street painting. And this is not the time and place for that. And I supported that on the previous commission, okay? And you didn't give us a choice at that meeting. We were voting blindly, and I don't want to do that, okay? Negative. That's yeah. not either. On the table. Negative. It was clear. Negative. Green Listen, or white? Hold on a second, guys. Guys, uh, Mr. Abbott, you were asked, can you answer those questions that uh, the vice mayor has raised? Pushing the wrong button again, I apologize. I think to answer her question in a slightly different way, there are several elements to this cost estimate. The utility companies will be giving us their costs. Their costs have multiple exclusions. They don't include in their cost restoration of the right of way of the private property if it's disturbed. Um, innumerable elements of the project costs are not included in the utilities. For clarity's sake, the $60,000 that everyone's referring to was only one piece of four utilities. That's what FPL charges to give us their binding cost estimate, which is only a piece of the puzzle. Once we get the binding cost estimates from the utility companies, and we will get those before we have compiled our complete estimate, I would be glad to give a project status report with those numbers. That would give everyone, I think, a sense of, okay, we are at this point. We could say that this point is 75% of the overall cost, and they're from the four utility companies. That, that would be my suggestion of giving you a status report. There's a couple of things that we're asking other questions I'd like to clarify. One, your ballot clearly states it. Undergrounding conversion from overhead to underground is not a beautification project. It results in a beautification project, but it is for safety. Your system is hardened. Your system performs far better in a hurricane situation than it does if it's left overhead. So think of it more as durability than as beautification. There is costs included in this 
engineering effort to do a preliminary street lighting uh, design. It won't be the final design, but it will give you an order of magnitude, the number of fixtures, the placement of the fixtures, final design, final this determination on luminaires and style, that comes later, but you'll know how much your street lighting cost. Wherever the numbers of five to $7,000 for the individual hookups came from, I can't, I can't even fathom where that came from. Some of the homes, it won't cost them a dime. If a house is, one of the modern houses already has undergrounding and that undergrounding goes out to a pull box, that pull box will be hooked up at no cost. There you go. Uh, there are others where they have, there was a letter into the ma manager this week. A resident needs to improve his service. He has a bad service box, a meter can. He needs to replace it. His question was, if I replace that now and I take my service underground out to the right of way, do I get credit for that? Well, what he gets is he doesn't have to pay for it later and he already has an estimate of about $2,000. In Golden Beach, we had four different types of undergroundings to the individual homes, and they ranged from nearly nothing, $500, up to about $2,750. Folks, the aggregate of what it's gonna cost your individual resident to tie in is gonna be in the $15 to $2,000 range. But that's what we're doing now is preparing those estimates. Um, I, 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 I hope, I hope that answers the majority of your questions, Vice Mayor. Okay. The, well, let, the, let's do one I want to make. No, is that, no, Tina, oh, okay. Tina, you already, go ahead. you already talked. I just want to ask Mr. Abbott. No, no, okay. but okay. listen, we're, we're going to go around. You, you had your, you had your time now. Go ahead, Eliana. Oh, please don't leave. Um, you want to run the timer. That'd be great. Uh, first of all, I want to say that I, really take offense and object when you try to mischaracterize and assume what people are thinking and why they make decisions, okay? So first of all, what I object to is half truths. What I object to are presenting residents with half information. We had uh, workshops, we had these information sessions, and the only numbers that residents heard were $60,000 to get an estimate. That's something, and I, and I rewatched the meetings. I recently rewatched the meetings, and I would invite you guys to rewatch the meetings where all the experts came in and FPL came in, um, and everybody, you know, those that was a number thrown around. Oh, it's no big deal. It's just $60,000. Let's just, and I even said, when I said I didn't want it on the ballot, I said, let's just spend the 60 grand. We don't need to put it on the ballot. Let's spend $60,000, get the real numbers, and then go back to the residents. But no, you decided to mischaracterize it as I'm against undergrounding. So you can sit there with a smirk on your face all you want. I'm not against undergrounding. What I'm against is these half-truths and you pushing and pushing and pushing your own personal vision without informing residents. And that is why I can't support the process. And that's the problem. I don't have a problem with the goals. Some of your goals we actually share, but we really, really differ is with process. I am all about information, full disclosure, all the information needs to be out to residents and you are about just getting to the end and whatever has to get us there gets us there. And that's where we differ and we're never gonna agree on that. For example, you made it sound like Paul Abbott quit because of me. I've never even talked to the man. Mr. Abbott, have you and I ever had conversations? No, okay? He didn't quit because of me. I had nothing to do with it. I don't have anything against him or anything. I have no, no dog in this fight, okay? But you tried to make it sound to residents like Mr. Abbott quit because of me. You sent an email out to people. Same thing with the walking lanes, okay? The walking lanes, what kind of moron would spend a million dollars on a walking path when we're gonna dig it up next year for your, for your undergrounding, right? Do you wanna be the idiot that spends a million dollars to paint a street to dig it up five minutes later? Or are you gonna pay twice as much to put to paint the thing? And by the way, the Department of Transportation, because I actually did the research and talked to them, you're not allowed to have a walking lane. You're only allowed to have bike lanes. It's not legally permitted to have walking lanes. You can legally have bike lanes that can occasionally, only occasionally be used by pedestrians. And you also cannot park in the bike lane. So when you push these half bullshit narratives to residents on your blog, in the Gazette, everywhere else, you are knowingly lying to residents and, and violating the truth in government. Okay, that's what you're doing all the time. And everybody knows you're doing it. And that's why I can't stomach sitting through these meetings because you're gonna say, I did this and I did that. Just like tonight, you're gonna say, Elian is not for undergrounding. And I voted no because I don't support undergrounding. 
I support undergrounding if that's what the residents want. I don't support thank this process. You. I don't support. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, funny. You were the one here five minutes ago telling everybody it was $9,500 to hook up the houses. I, I did not say $9,500. Yeah, you did. I did not say $9,500. Okay. Well, I, I think every, I did it. My everybody son's heard. I can bring this back to the I, point. Yeah, I everybody heard it. it. Hold on a second, Charles. Hold on a second, Charles. Nellie, you had your hand up next. I was just going to say that. The and hold on a second. Hold on a second. Vice Mayor, we're going in order. You spoke first. I asked a question. I didn't have full you, three you minutes. You had three minutes. I, I three thought minutes. Was, but yeah, why don't you let the vice mayor finish her question? Well, no, no. She but she had she had three minutes and then she asked the question. question. Go ahead, Nellie. We're no, bullying I, everybody. Let her talk. No, but I I you know, it's it's very sad that people only think that some that we are misleading the residents when it's clear that to say out there that undergrounding from the street to the person's house is going to cost $7,000 to $9,000, which is exactly what you said here, Liana. You said that. And it's on tape. I have to it's on okay. tape. Turn, and we will turn, put it back. Turn her mic off, Jose, for a while. while and it's not talking. right to do that to residents. It's not right to say to residents that we can't have private, um, a private kayak launch at our park. Those are things that are true. You talk about truth in government, but you're the one who violates that more than anyone else on this commission. You're constantly lying to our residents. You lie to them to get them to come on here with a bunch of lies, telling them we did say from day one that the ballot question was to see if residents wanted to spend 16 to 18 minutes. 18 million. I don't understand where you got the 60,000. You're the one who didn't want to spend the $60,000 from day one. And I'm going to find the recording where you clearly state that as you've knocked down every single proposal that has been brought to this commission for the benefit of our residents. Let's talk, for example, about Abbott Avenue drainage. Our residents on Abbott Avenue have still not gotten any solution to their flooding problem because of you, because you went and said that CGA was a problem and that they were liars and all this other stuff. And residents are still getting water going into their garages because we couldn't give them a solution because now we have to wait for another uh, engineer company to come around and give us another estimate or whatever it is that they're gonna give us and spend, and you talk about spending money, we're gonna be spending a lot more money with all these new engineer firms that we did when we were with CGA. So right there off the bat, it's $50,000. Plus we have to pay this new engineer company. I think it was, how much was it? I think it was 60 or $80,000. I don't remember that. So honestly, let's see. And then we're also getting sued by the hotel that doesn't agree with your beach ordinance that you drafted on your own. You did not bring that to the commission. We were all blindsided here. Okay, so let's really talk the truth. And I'm saying it here on national TV, on, on, in front of everybody and all our residents, so they know what the truth really is. And I'm not calling you crazy, so be respectful. And I, I totally agree with this project. I brought this to the commission and I wanted to get this done because this is what I heard from our residents. And this is what our residents voted for on November 4th, okay? That's what they said. 75% of our residents said they wanted undergrounding at the price of $18 million. And if we have to spend more, then we will let them know that we have to spend more. It is okay. what it is. Thanks, Nellie. Charles, you're next. Um, but can we try to, we have a motion on the table to move forward. And again, we're getting, you know, everybody's getting very personal. And I don't think it, it we're getting off the subject. And we, I'm going to rely on you. Mr. Reasonable, to bring this thing back, okay? Go ahead. Well, thanks, Mr. Mayor, and I've been trying. I've been trying to interject um, because this doesn't have to be personal, and um, everyone's bringing a valid point. So I, if you guys actually express your valid points, we would actually come to agreement on this quicker and more amicably. A question for Mr. Abbott. Um, at the last commission meeting, you mentioned to us that you could give us a ballpark figure plus or minus 25%, which is a huge number. 
Uh, but what would that ballpark figure be based on your knowledge and your experience? Well, it's real simple. If you took the 18 million that you had on the ballot and you added 25% to it, you could be as high as $22.5 million. I don't think okay. you're it's gonna be less than 18. In 2012 and 2013, we gave this community an estimate without the advent of the collated drawings with just our experience. And in 2013, it was over $15 million. With your reasonable judgment, when you went to the ballot, I don't know where the number came from, but you said 16 to 18. I think that was reasonable. I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball to tell you. The one thing I will say, Joshua earlier was dead on. Construction costs, material costs are rising exponentially, some because of COVID, some because of it's just a natural uh, evolution of, of costs. They go up, they come back down. But I think 18 is your low number. I think the number is going to be higher than 18. But until we get the collated drawings, until we get factual information, we said it in the last meeting, one of the, the, the callers said, you don't build a house without doing an estimate of what the cost of the house is going to be. And that's based on plans. Yes. You draw a picture on the back of a napkin and you estimate it, you don't know what it's going to cost. You get a set of architectural plans. In this case, we get a set of engineering plans and we do a factual cost estimate. And with this just under $300,000, um, it's my understanding in discussions with the town manager that that will be about halfway to all the technical drawings and specifications that we would need to actually get a deliverable project. Are you confident that with this $297,000, um, we will have the have enough information to actually get to a more definitive estimate for the project in spite of abs the cost abs of construction? Very I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. I apologize. Absolutely. That's why I support taking this process and taking this 50% step. This is not just an effort and a throwaway uh, work product. This is just a step. The rest of the documents will, will deal with the, the greater details, the, the minutia that's necessary to put it out to bid. Understand, the safest bid in the construction industry is the one with the greatest level of detail. You can put out a set of drawings that are at 50% and bid it, and your costs are gonna have contingencies in it that are untold. We get to this 50% point, we can do an accurate estimate. We finish the documents, we put it out to the public bidding market, which will be driven by heaven only knows what in the next six, nine, 12 months. And then we'll know exactly what we cost. But what we're gonna give you in the next four to six months is a, a dead on number that you can say, we can put this out to bid with, we know we're gonna be in this area. Some bids are gonna be low, some bids are gonna be high. And but it's, it's my understanding that the, the infrastructure for the street lighting is included. Absolutely. Yeah, it's absolutely. A different scale included. That, was, that was explained, which was explained. Restoration of all of the disturbed products and, and understand this $280,000 we're talking now is included in your in your overall project budget. We include a line for soft costs. We're asking you to spend some of the project cost up front to give you accurate information, but that cost rolls into the cost of the construction. You don't come up with an estimate that's $18 million and then say, oh, and add, add, add for soft costs. It's all included. You'll know where you're going to stand when we get. And once we get through this 50%, will there be a visual representation for the voters to see of, of more or less where the yes, sir. boxes are going to be so they can visually see where how it will impact their quality of life? Yes, sir. We will have for you the location, of every transformer, every switch, every fuse, everything that has to be incorporated in the utility
process. Everyone focuses on FPL. Remember, you have communications, you'll have pedestals where AT&T has to connect to your house, where Atlantic Broadband has to connect to your house. We're gonna tell you where each one of those pieces fits in the, in, 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 in the, in the town of Surfside. Okay, and I'm gonna actually just follow up with my comments, but I have one last question for you, sir, Mr. Abbott. Um, we had contracted you for, for $40,000 to guide us through this. Um, can you tell me, because I don't know exactly what happened, but what it was that caused you to quit or something, um, and, and from my opinion, kind of abandon us and then come back? Because I don't want this to happen again. I felt as though the commission was not acting professionally last time. I felt as though, and, and while you say it was a deferment, I didn't take it as a deferment. I took it as we aren't gonna do this and we're not gonna spend this money. When I come to a community, and as many of your fellow council members have done, they've talked to other communities, I talk straight from the chest. You hear me and you hear me clearly. We need this step in the process to give you an accurate okay. estimate. Thank you, sir. So I can explain to you from my perspective and I think I can speak for a couple of other members of the commission. Um, that um, that it was we were we were kind of missing this discussion in the in the in the uh, in piecing together the project where um, where all of a sudden it seemed to come come to us with the three hundred thousand dollar tag being fifty percent of what we understood um, and that and that wasn't had hadn't been outlined before so it was nothing against you it was something that we learned from the process I spoke with the town manager he actually took ownership which was to, uh, to his credit and fixed it, and that's why we're looking at the document today. Thank From you, my Charles. understanding, Charles, we are Charles. actually in sync. And just let me finish, Mr. Mayor, because I know I was asking questions, they, well, questions, they didn't run my clock up. But can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you, but again, you've been, you've been going on for quite a while, but go ahead, please finish. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to talk at all, though. This is very, very much a continuous process. Look, we've been through a lot the last year plus two months, um, but we crafted a legitimate ballot question that was better than we could have imagined considering we were doing guesswork. But I, and I wasn't, Deborah, De, um, Deborah Simidavia pointed it correctly that if this whole thing was inverted and we were arguing for beautification of, of high and dry power lines, I would probably be singing, but you wouldn't want to hear me. And, uh, you know, but actually I'm listening to the voters I'm doing due diligence, and this is part of the process. We have been elected to make these big decisions. We came in under COVID, and we've made a lot of small decisions because we were faced with them. But this is an initiative that the voters clearly said they wanted. Now that I understand what's better involved, it has my support. The expenditure of this money has my support as well because it's gonna give us the infrastructure drawings and the basics to bring it out to bid, to lock down that 18 to $22 million to bring that to a vote next February. And at that time, we'll be, we'll be judged on our own records for COVID, for this, and for many other things. Um, but uh, long live Surfside, and uh, I hope that we can get the right elevation yeah. from which to start this project and base it, Bro. because that's where we're gonna sink or swim. Very good, thank you for Mr. that, Mr. Mayor. Uh, hold I on a second. Oh, yeah, you can. I'll, I'll get you, Paul, but I think uh, Assistant Manager wants to say something. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commissioners. Just uh, you know, just to add to the discussion that that Paul has been starting, that just to remind everyone, we're talking about you know the cost and where we were in July and what we knew. Very little is we just really got started on it. You know, we said that it'll be a, FPL is designed, but as Paul had mentioned, there are many other utilities that we have to. We already approved the Atlantic Broadband. You know, they make up their own design fees, and the last big one is is AT and T, uh, and we've apparently finally gotten some movement on them. They've been very non-cooperative, uh, you know, basically, but we finally got some movement on them. That is the final, uh, probably the final big, bigger unknown number for their design fee. We'll probably should have that for the commission in June, but just, you know, since we're for disclosure, we're all bringing that out. You know, we'll have that, num we'll have that number. We have more discussions with them to see if we can, uh, what we can negotiate with them. But I just wanted to mention that since we're, we're out there. There will be another number in June for the, uh, you know, we have the FPL, we have the Atlantic Broadband, the last piece, the bigger piece of those three main utilities, AT&T. So 
Thank you. I just want to mention that for the record. Paul, go ahead, and then we'll get to the vice mayor. Uh, Jason was addressing exactly what I wanted to tell you. I didn't want us to walk away from tonight thinking that we've hit the final button. You still have AT&T to deal with. It's going to be a significant number, but we'll do our due diligence. We'll do our negotiations, and we'll come back to you one more time when you have all of the utility design costs. We don't have AT&T's finalized yet. Very good. Vice Mayor, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I want to thank Commissioner Kessel for his questions, although I have to say he was allowed at least six questions, and I asked one, and I wasn't allowed to respond back to uh, Mr. Abbott, but thank you for letting me respond now, uh, moments later. Uh, so, Mr. Abbott, um, I just wanted to know, uh, are you comfortable with the stopgap checkpoint, and at what amount is comfortable for you uh, within this? I, I don't question spending this money. I know it's necessary for the project, but I think at some point, if we could um, come back to have an update on how we're doing and what the costs are based on your experience and the numbers you're, you're seeing. I would like to report back to the commission once we have the four utility company estimates, the binding cost estimate from FPL, the cost estimate from at and I'm not talking engineering, I'm talking, they will give us a cost estimate of their portion of the work, uh, Atlantic Broadband, and uh, uh, we still think Hotwire may wanna participate, but once they give us what their cost to physically install their conductor in the conduit and concrete products that we'll be supplying, I will bring that as a interim report to the commission. And do okay. you know at what point that would be? Uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to, you know, because I'd like to see the order of magnitude of, so we know really more the cost because this, um, I mean, right here, it, do, it doesn't tell us, and, and it's not, you know, uh, it just doesn't, it tells us the rates for the different engineers. Um, it's that one, I don't know. If, and the following page it's, is the rates for the engineers. So I'm just wondering, like, you know, what are we, what are we getting for these amounts, the different phases? I, I mean, I think you understand what I'm asking for in, in terms of the um, order of magnitude. So I, I honestly and truly don't feel as it's even appropriate to analyze the engineer's cost. We, as Jason gets a bill each month, he'll know how much we've spent, but they are telling us as a not to exceed, this is their cost to prepare these collaborated drawings. There, it's, it, it, it's, I hate to say this to you, but it's somewhat irrelevant. They're going to do their work in a judicious way, particularly once they get the input from the engineers, uh, from the utility companies, I apologize, I misspoke, from the utility companies. Their fee, we can report every month when they uh, give us an invoice and I will monitor their invoices. I will work very closely with the technical staff from KCI on their work effort, but it, it, it is, we can tell you what it's costing, but it's not going to tell you anything. Hey, Paul, Paul, well, that, that's not really what I'm asking. I'm asking well, more I, of, of the, uh, the order, you know, the, the scope of the work, you know, at, at what point I, would you be coming you know, back let's, to let's, at let's, the final let's, end after you've gathered everything? I don't, I don't think anybody understands what you're asking. So maybe you could ask it a different way. Uh, let's see what Jason has to say. Maybe he understands. I, uh, perhaps if I, if I, if I may, uh, thank you. Uh, there's there's two two possibilities here. One is that on a monthly basis now in the town manager's report, there's a section that uh, uh, Andy has put together called the, the capital projects update. And every month, Paul uh, writes up uh, a report on what's the progress going on in the, the project every single month. So that will be reported every single month uh, about where we are with the project and such. And if it's based on, if you're talking about an iterative cost estimate, I think in, in, in speaking with Paul is it, it's everything. It, it's it's it, until the FPL, AT&T, Atlantic Broadband and or Hotwire, if we get into that, those utilities, we pay them and they do the full design. And then KCI does all the design coordination until all of the, pretty much until they get to that 50% uh, design coordination effort, 
that's the, the next time that he can come Jason, up with that. Jason, let me, you know, let me, let me, let me, let me just make, try to clear this up. Yeah, Vice Mayor, um, we're talking tonight. There's a motion on the table to authorize a not to exceed expenditure of $296,000. I think what you're trying to say is you want them to spend maybe half of that or 100,000 or 50,000 and then come back for further authorization. Is that what you're trying to get at? No, that's not what I'm trying to get so at. Please I'm, be clear then. Okay, I'm being clear. I, I'm willing to authorize the full amount tonight. Then that's but, all we're doing. And, well, and no, you, but you I'd want, like to if, know, I'd like reports at the different You can stages. get reports. You can we don't get even reports. have a timeline. Do we have a timeline we, we, for this? We, he said four months, six months. That's what he said. If you were listening, he said four to six months. No, I'm months. listening. I'm listening. Totally. All right, well, if you were listening, he said four to six months. So... Okay, you agree to spend the 296 not to exceed. I think we're ready to call the question, then, okay? Madam Clerk, call the call, call the roll. Yes, yeah, so we can go. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Salazar? It's absent. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. Mayor Burkett? Yes. Mayor the motion okay. carries. Okay, very good. Um, thank you all for hey, that. Bye. I... Oh, if I may, Mr. Mayor, we have the budget amendment to actually have the appropriate the funds to do it. Yeah, okay. Well, let's do that. I think the vice mayor just left in a huff, but uh, I think we've got three left, so we can probably get that done. Is there a... Number five. Fiscal year 2021 budget amendment resolution number eight. Madam Clerk, would you please read us, read that? Take yes, us through that. Resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Surfside, Florida, approving budget amendment number eight to the fiscal year 2021 budget, providing for implementation and providing for an effective date, item five. Is there a motion to move that forward? I'll move that forward. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, just so it's clear for everybody listening, that is the item that will fund the previous yes vote. Okay, um, we have some speakers that want to uh, comment. I think we've got plenty of time. I think you could set the clock at three minutes. The speakers don't all have to use three minutes, but go ahead, Madam Clerk, bring the first speaker. in. First speaker is Joshua Epstein. Joshua, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Uh, we don't hear Mr. Epstein, so why don't we bring in the next speaker, and if Mr. Epstein can get his connection fixed, we'll bring him back. Next speaker will be Horace Henderson. Horace, please say your name. Good evening, Horace Henderson, 9195 Collins Ave. Um, I'm going to be very brief here. I I think the conversation where we were, where it was just said that the, that the vote doesn't matter, it's the circumstance around the vote, uh, I think this is ludicrous. The commissioners, votes, and the mayor and vice mayor as well, are the final arbiter of the decisions that are made. They are the only important thing that comes out of these meetings. So for a commissioner to say that the vote, the actual vote doesn't matter, is absurd. I'm very glad that Vice Mayor Paul finally voted yes, even though she obviously did not want to do it because she clearly is set against this but it's very good that she voted yes because 75 percent of the voters want this and are clear they want this at 18 million dollars and it's pretty clear to me that they want it even if it's the 22.5 million that uh, uh mr abbott was talking about so um, i'm very glad that the commissioners have pushed forward and are resolving this and getting it done because that's what the voters want. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Can't hear you, Sandra. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Next speaker is Fernanda Cicada. Fernanda, please take your name and address for the record and your comments. Fernanda, please unmute yourself. Hello, 
can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, I don't agree with the previous uh, residents. My name is Fernanda Picada, 9172, Collins Avenue, apartment 409. Uh, I did vote for them on the ground here. I voted yes. Uh, but I didn't know that, uh, that all this money was going to be spent. So I would go back on that vote if I were given the chance. I'd like for you to reconsider and tell the residents how much it's going to cost, the scope of the work, everything together, and then we vote again. No problem. Thank you. That's all I have thank, to say. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, we'll try again, Joshua Epstein. Joshua, please try, state your name and address for the record in your comments. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Joshua Epstein, can you guys reset the clock, please, before I get started? It's at 210. Thank you. Um, okay, so I was going to start, Joshua Epstein, IP17, Bay Drive. I was just going to say that I, that's what I, uh, I had heard Paul Abbott say earlier, so I was kind of just echoing what he said, with that the, the equipment prices have gone up, the materials cost has gone up. We were just told that it's $18 million on the low end, meaning that we know, and I don't think every project, it's never actually on the low end, meaning this is going to be well into the $20 million plus. The range presented to residents was $16 to $18 million. So that right there was not approved by residents. We have to look at when this was done in 2013. It was done well. We got a price. We got a range. Of the, with that range, that's what we already went to residents with. So we need an updated range with the current equipment cost. That costs our town $0 to get. We get that range. Then we can spend money out the wazoo if the range is within our budget. But to just go and do a study or to get the, the plans drawn or whatever this $300,000 is being spent on without even knowing what the current price of this project is going to be is ludicrous. This project could turn out to be $30 million and we'll be sitting here scratching our heads like, well, we cut somebody's payroll. What could we have done with $300,000? So not only, okay, and then two, I think also with the power lines, I'm 100% for undergrounding the power lines, but one, life is about decisions and governing is about decisions. I want a $10 million yacht. I want a $10 million property. I want a $10 million car. But if I have $10 million, I have to choose. So we, one, we don't even have this money. We have to take out a loan, which we have to pay interest on after we take out that loan. But two, we have to decide what is best for our residents. So we have to choose between either spending $20 million on this or acquiring multiple other properties or acquiring one property or redoing uh, the facility or putting a second store in the community center or doing a, a wide range of things that we can do for our residents. But we simply cannot do them all. So it's misleading when you go to residents and say, do you want this? That's like coming to me, do you want a Ferrari? Yes, I'd love a Ferrari, but not for that price tag, not for the maintenance costs, not if I'm going to have to pay five to $7,000. And that range was brought up at an earlier meeting. I had that written down. And I was, I'm walking on a street right here right now, 14 out of 15 houses have their lines above grounds. I'm not worried about the new modern houses having to pay five to $7,000, $3,000, whatever that number is. I'm worried about those older houses because even if you give them a loan, they still have to pay that money. Money is tight for a lot of people now and five to $7,000, no matter what financial situation you're in, is really a lot of money. So there's a fiscally responsible way to do this. You get that number, you get that range that'll cost us near to nothing to get. Then you come back and you make the decision. But to blindly go into something without knowing what the range is, and they told us $18 million, that whatever eight, it's going to be over $18 million, is, it's ludicrous. And I can tell you right now, if you, give me, if you tell me how much it's going to cost for one block, that'll cost us a couple thousand dollars, I could tell you right now how much it's going to cost our entire town. When you do a math problem, you don't have to do the entire thing. You can do it. It's five this way, six this way. This is going to be the total cost. We don't need an exact cost. We need a range. Those are easy ways to get a range for next to nothing, not squander three hundred thousand dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Jeff Rose. Jeff, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Jeff Rose, eighty fifty one Fraud Avenue. Um, thank you guys for your previous vote. Also, thank you, Mr. Abbott. Um, Everything you just said was very informative and we'll just keep it basic. Like you guys said, um, you can't build a house without plans and you guys now are getting the plans. And I think what everybody, everyone's going in circles. The bottom line is we're not going to be able to figure out the cost without this. And I think you guys took us one step closer, closer to getting to, like I said, the next ballot will, and the residents will decide what the final cost is if they're going to move forward or not. So thank you guys for doing this. And, and I really appreciate it because I think we're one step closer. Um, and that's it. I mean, you guys really, you're finally taking action. And this was a big item for a lot of people. So thank you guys, all of you guys that, that have do this. It wasn't just you guys that are on. Um, I know Vice Mayor Paul stepped off, but she also voted for it as well. And with, you know, all of you guys are, are getting us 
we'll say to the finish line, but it's really just a start of, of the race. We can't even get to the race without having this information. It's like, you don't have your cleats, you don't have your uniform. Well, you're not gonna be able to start the race without those things, and you guys are, are getting us there. It's, I know it's baby steps. Uh, I get frustrated with it sometimes, but this is this is a big step that you guys just took. So I do appreciate it. Um, thank you very much, because uh, like Mr. Rabbit said, you guys can't do anything with you know. We can't move forward without this next information. You guys put it all out there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Debbie Simadevilla. Debbie, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Okay, guys, promise not to go on too long. Deborah Smedia, 9108 Abbott Avenue. I agree with Jeff Rose 100%. Anyone who has built, as a lot of us have, understands spending, and it takes money to get to the true number. We owe it to the residents to give them a true number, people, in order to vote for a geo bond, okay? So thank you. Thank you for voting on this in a realistic, responsible way. You know, it takes leadership to make tough decisions, but that's what your residents expect. So thank you very much, uh, Mayor, for holding the special meeting. We really need it. Obviously, look at the time we've taken. Thank you, Nelly, for insisting, for really being a leader in this matter and going out and reaching out to all the communities. You know, I really appreciate it because, yeah, we've kicked this ball around for a long time. And, you know, we're not, none of us are professionals in this matter. Paul Abbott is, and I appreciate him, but everybody here is trying to do the best they can. And I have to tell you guys, um, Charles, again, thank you for being selfless and being level-headed and a man of wisdom in voting in this matter, Commissioner Kessel. Um, I don't appreciate, you know, honestly, all the personal bickering. And I have to say, on next door, there are people there giving a lot of misinformation, lying and saying to people that we could get this, you know, done for free, that we're already, already paying for it all done. That's just not true, people. FPL said it. I spoke to the other communities. It's just not true. I just went by Pinecrest, and it looks terrible. There's some areas look pretty, and then you have giant concrete poles with with chopped off wooden poles, and that's not good enough for us for Little Surfside. You know, I think we deserve that paradise. So I would really appreciate it. I'm, I'm reaching out to the people on social media who are lying to the public and knowing better, because I'm not going to say names, but these people, they should know the truth. They should have heard the FPL consultants. And I don't appreciate them bullying myself and others who just want to get to the, uh, to the, to the results. We just want to know. So I just wanted to say that I appreciate all of you guys. And I ask that everyone please try to cooperate and work as a community because our community deserves it. Again, thank you for your vote. You guys are, are, are responsible leaders and I really appreciate it. Thank you for your, your professionalism. Again, thank you for the special meeting, too. Thank you, Deb. <laughs> okay, guys. Next speaker, please. Next, 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 next speaker is Jordan W. I don't know his last name. Jordan, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Hey, it's uh, Jordan Wachtel, 9381 Abbott. Good evening, everybody. How are you guys? Good evening. Um, just a quick question. I'm sorry I signed on late. I'm just wondering if maybe, Mr. Mayor, you could touch. I know the governor signed an executive order to remove COVID restrictions. I just wanna know what that means for the city now, if maybe the pool area will be open fully and maybe you guys could just touch on that. If you, ha if you have already, I apologize. And if not, if you could touch on it. Thank you. Uh, we haven't touched on it, but uh, I, my understanding is, is that all restrictions are gonna be lifted on July 1st. I understand that we're gonna go back to uh, regular meetings uh, at the next meeting. So uh, Surfside is getting back to normal and uh, we're gonna have our fireworks on July 4th. And uh, I personally am very excited about that, but uh, maybe there are other commissioners that wanna comment on that. Does this Does meeting this have a good welfare or no? No. Okay. No. Um, I, I've, been, I've been wanting to hear that from the town manager and the town attorney actually. My specific question to them was, if we have any town emergency orders that are still open and need closing, for example, Okay, but let's let's get the answer to that one question, and then we'll resume our uh, resident input, Mr. Manager. Thank you, guys. Madam, Thank you, guys. Thank you very you're, much. You're, you're welcome, Madam exactly. Attorney. Go ahead. Um, yes, the governor has issued two orders: um, twenty-one one hundred one and twenty-one one hundred two, back to back. Basically, um, 
the gist of it is that municipal emergency orders such as surf sites have all been suspended effective immediately and any orders which restrict individual liberties or business liberties have been suspended. Um, that would include all of our orders and specifically our virtual meeting emergency orders which allow these Zoom meetings. So we will be resuming effective uh, May 11th uh, in-person meetings with the commission in person as well to comply with the governor's mandate. And any orders that restrict individual liberties or businesses have been rescinded. That would include face masks for the most part. However, we are analyzing the order and trying to formulate an opinion for all of you how that affects uh, face, max, uh, face masks, separations, uh, distancing, and things of that nature. Yes, Thank but you very for much. now, uh, and let me just say that the county is also reviewing the orders and opining, and there's a meeting tomorrow with the county attorney and the managers. Um, you know, we are home rule county, and the county is evaluating the impact of the governor's orders on, on Miami-Dade County specifically. So I'll be reporting to you further and formulating an opinion. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Next speaker, please. Thank you. Next speaker, Next speaker will be George Kusulas. George, George, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Uh, George Kusulas, 9225 Collins Avenue. I, I think that the, the presentation and the answers from Mr. Abbott should give you a, a great deal of confidence um, going forward. Um, He's, I think he's very upfront with that this, uh, you know, this is a process that may yield some answers you don't like, uh, that the, the current number in front of you is conservative, uh, but is not out of line by an order of magnitude, which you, usually when that expression is used means by a power of 10. So it's certainly not that, and it's probably not even double, as he said. I think that the last meeting were even one and a half times that, but it's likely to be more. So I think you should be confident in proceeding the way you're going to. The other thing I'll tell you, construction cost estimating is a very weird thing, and you really don't know where you are until you get the numbers from the people who are actually going to do it and, and actually put their name to it. Um, on, on this side, looking outward, it's very easy to come up with estimates, and there's a paradox that as you get more precise, um, with your estimate, as in more detail, that often gets less accurate because you're beginning to count everything, but you're only counting the stuff you can see. And if you say, oh, we left out the such and such. So sometimes an early estimate that is a very broad stroke estimate of so many dollars per linear foot of street or whatever, and just use that number based on very good assumptions from similar uh, locations and in a similar time can yield a very good result. So just be aware as the numbers come in, once you get them from the utilities, that's going to be something you can really rely on. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have a motion on the table. There's a second. Would you please call the roll? Yes, Mayor. We have a motion and a second to adopt the budget amendment. Correct, which is the funding of this particular item to move the plans forward. It's, you know, we voted to do it, but we can't do it without voting to fund it. Charles? Sure. Thank you, sir. If I could just comment briefly. Um, I personally, professionally, as a member of this commission, do not think that the vice mayor or Commissioner Salzauer um, are against undergrounding. Um, I see their questions as very valid, their, their um, points of contention as valid, and I listen to them and I appreciate their opinions. Um, and, um, and I'm grateful that the, that the vice mayor is on board going for this because um, if anybody was against this in the beginning, it was me. I mean, I clearly said that, that I was for high and dry power lines, but I let the voice of the, of the people speak and the vote was loud and clear. Um, but I'm con gonna continue to do, 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 do diligence on this project, if I could say it, thanks. Thank you, call the question please, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Commissioner Salazar is absent. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul is absent. Mayor Burkett? Enthusiastic, yes. Mayor, the motion carries. Great. I think we're done for tonight. Is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, yes, but I would also first, can I say something, Charlie? Sure. I just wanted to thank Mr. Abbott 
uh, Jason and Andy, you guys have done an amazing job. Thank you very much for pushing this project along. You guys are the best. And I also want to take thank Debbie Sima de Villa. She's been amazing in going out and uh, finding information from different cities and helping me out with this whole project. She's been a great part of this whole thing. Thank you so much, Debbie. You're an amazing resident and we love you. Bye-bye. Thank you. And I, I get uh, to... Uh, I, well, before you before you make the motion to adjourn, I just I, I just was reminded that um, Jeff Rose said something that that got me thinking, and that is is that we've been here a year, okay, and we've been here more than a year, and we've we've talked a lot and we've done a little bit, but at the end of the day, results matter. Results matter. Jeff talked about taking action. Okay, taking action matters. Okay, now we've got issues that have been languishing that we just talk about and talk about and talk about and talk about and nothing gets done. I want to congratulate you three. And listen, I give credit to the vice mayor for voting for the item. I wish she was here to fund it. But, you know, she decided to go off in a huff, it seems. But in any event, I think that action is the byword. We need to get stuff done. And all this studying, no studies and analyzing, we've done our homework. We've done that work. The people who put us here expect us to do our homework and then act. Okay, they don't expect us to come to meeting after meeting after meeting and make excuses as to why we can't do something. We need to act and we're doing it and I'm proud that I was a part of this tonight. Thank you all very much for that. And I Thanks, also would like to thank Charles Kessel. Thank you so much for supporting Charles. this and for you having a up. change of heart. Thank you so much. The residents really appreciate it. And I know that you know that this is what they really want. And yeah. they showed and that on election day. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And because I do have I do have an open-mindedness. Um, Thank you. And um, and uh, well, because that's, that's critical to this, that's critical to this commission because it's always, they got two on one side and two on the other and your open-mindedness is what gets things done. Thank you for that. And I appreciate the residents who spoke out in favor of, of action and, and keep staying on point. I also noticed that the two minutes and the one minute, Max, I, I appreciate too. <laughs> the three well, minutes. Well, listen, I, I try to, yeah, so I'll, again, I'll toss for, my hat in that court. For, for clarity's sake, listen, we, we have, you know, and again, I'm going to write about this next month in the Gazette because we have one of our commissioners screaming that I'm cutting people off. What I'm trying to do is budget our time. Sometimes we have lots of speakers, and if we go three minutes for every speaker, we'll be an hour and a half for every single subject, and we've only got four hours for every meeting. So we've got to prioritize, and we've got to do what we've got to do to get through the issues. It's all a balance in that. Yep. Okay. All right. Good. Motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Aye. Uh, aye. Have a great night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And congratulations, Sandra. Bye. Bye.